Hi everyone, I'm Moose and I don't want to be buried in a pet cemetery. Stephen King's scariest novel is getting another shot on screen. And while fans know that a reanimated cat is far from the biggest threat, there are few things more frightening than when our furry friends turn to the dark side. Killer critters and perilous pets are a time-honored tradition in horror cinema, and we're here to help you put them down. So, pet your pooch, cuddle your kitty, and whatever you do, don't go down that road, because this is how to kill evil animals. You don't want to go down that road. You go down that road, the evil cemetery is gonna, no? Now, before we get started, I want to assure everyone that now this nerd loves animals. This is Will and his little kitty Katsu. This is my sweet baby girl, Vanilla Bean. And this is Shane and his fake but no less lovable dog, Render. The thought of violence against helpless, adorable creatures utterly sickens us. But when it comes to horror movies, man's best friend can quickly become his worst enemy. So let's start with some very bad dogs. The poster child for killer canines has to be Kujo. Rabbit. 200 pounds of slobbering, slimy, psychopathic St. Bernard, created by famous Corgi fan Stephen King. After being bitten on the nose by a bat, this junkyard dog goes rabid and traps Donna Trenton and her son inside their boiling hot car for hours. Faced with the unpleasant prospect of a slow death from dehydration and heat stroke, Donna makes a daring escape attempt and winds up bitten, bloodied, and back in the car. Surely King Staple Sheriff George Bannerman will save the day, right? Uh -uh. Donna makes one last desperate escape attempt, and thanks to adrenaline, maternal instincts, and the possible onset of a rabies infection, she bashes the Bernard with a bat, impales him on the broken stump, and finally sends him off to live with a nice farm family. Now, I'm not sure I would qualify Cujo as a bad dog. From all accounts, he was just a big old friendly goof before fate sunk its fangs into him. But Max, from Man's Best Friend, was genetically engineered for evil. Dog. After escaping from Lance Henriksen's lab, this massive mastiff lives out every dog's fantasy. Woof! He swallows cats whole, gets revenge on that pesky postman. It's your ass, Mr. Postman. And marks his territory with a stream of acid urine. Pretty much the only thing he doesn't do is eat a car, and it's not for lack of trying. Being bred for battle, Max is able to withstand damage that would destroy your average pup, but a shotgun blast from his creator ends his tragic existence. Once again, all the carnage isn't Max's fault. Is he gonna be a first draft pick for the Puppy Bowl? No, but he's only bad because he was bred that way. If you wanna talk about a real hellhound, look no further than Devil Dog. This 1978 movie stars a German Shepherd bred by a Satanist and sold to an unsuspecting family. Unlike our other two subjects, Lucky doesn't need to get his paws dirty. This possessed pup steals his victim's souls and forces them to do his unholy bidding, from setting fires to sticking their arms in lawnmowers. After failing to put him down old yeller style, our hero learns that he can't possibly kill the hellhound, but he can imprison it for a thousand years by holding a sacred symbol up to its eye. Now that we've finished off Fido, let's take a look at some feline fiends. Cats tend to get a bad rap as antisocial, aggressive assholes, but we all know they can be just as loyal and loving as any fluffy puppy. Well done, good boy. At least in real life. When it comes to horror movies, however, cats are pretty much good for one of two things, providing fake out jump scares. What is up with that cat? Is someone throwing it? And tearing out your throat with their razor sharp claws. Now, be warned, we're about to talk about the book and the first Pet Cemetery film. The new movie makes a lot of changes, but still, if you want to avoid potential spoilers, you may want to skip ahead. 
when his daughter's beloved kitty, Winston Churchill, aka Church, gets splattered by a speeding semi, Lou Creed has a hard decision to make. Does he have a tough conversation with Ellie about the finality of death and the unfairness of existence? Or does he plant the body in an ancient Micmac burial ground and hope she won't notice when he returns as a rotten, undead revenant? Now, Church doesn't directly kill anybody, but he's definitely an accomplice to the grisly deeds of his fellow zombie Gage. <laughs> Creed has to undo the evil he's wrought, but before he can bring himself to send his son six feet under, he tests out his method on the cruel little cat. Using a big, meaty steak as a lure, he injects Church with a lethal dose of morphine and steals himself for the even harder task ahead. Now, if one killer cat is bad enough, imagine what a handful a whole brood would be. In the 1991 made-for-TV movie called Strays, a colony of feral cats infests a peaceful small town home and menaces the family that dares to move in. We all know kitties can be territorial, but these cats from hell take no shit from their unwanted roommates. Now to me, it just looks like these guys are being playful and curious, and honestly, for bloodthirsty killers, they seem friendlier than a lot of cats I know. And I can think of worse ways to die than being smothered by a swarm of sweet little kittens, but when push comes to shove and your back's against the kitchen sink, you can bait the alpha into biting an electrical cable. <laughs> Our final feline fatality comes courtesy of Uninvited, an ultra schlocky alien ripoff about a cruise ship menaced by a mutant cat. <laughs> actually, it's kind of unclear what the monster actually is. Sometimes it's a regular cat. <laughs> but then it has an uglier tiny cat living inside its mouth and on occasion it just turns into a grody puppet that looks like a reject from Hobgoblins. Hobgoblins, Hobgoblins, what do you do with those Hobgoblins? Either way, this cat is equipped with more than just claws. It's got toxic saliva that can melt your face off or cause you to blow buckets of blood out of every orifice. <laughs> Talk about a case of the Mondays. It's like a Garfield, right? That's a Garfield thing. Lasagna. <laughs> After slaughtering some spring breakers, the uninvited succumbs to every cat's most hated nemesis, water. Now, we all know that when it comes to companionship, humans aren't limited to cats and dogs. I myself have had hermit crabs, hamsters, and a little green anole lizard named Bartholomew. So let's close out with a look at some more peculiar pets. Haven't you always wanted a helper monkey? A precocious primate who can solve all your problems with their opposable thumbs and adorable antics? Well, that's exactly what happens to the athletic Alan after a truck accident leaves him paralyzed from the neck down in George Romero's Monkey Shines. His friend hooks him up with a cute little capuchin monkey named Ella after injecting her with brain juice to make her the perfect pet. The two hit it off swimmingly, bonding over his happy love songs and becoming best friends. But much like Homer Simpson and his monkey mojo, Alan is a bad influence. Ray or mojo. Thanks to her experimental enhancement, Ella telepathically absorbs her master's ill will and goes ape on everyone who's ever wronged him. She starts off slow, killing a bird that pecks her pal's face, but it quickly escalates, and before you know it, this pissed off primate is electrocuting Alan's mother in the bathtub. And injecting anyone she can with a syringe full of sodium pentobarbital. Jesus. After telling his former bestie how he really feels, Don't you love me? Yeah, I love you. Alan lures Ella in with their favorite song, sinks his teeth in, and shakes. Oh, 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 oh. 
Now, if fluffy bunnies are more your speed, please check out Night of the Leapus. I'm personally deathly allergic to rabbits, especially giant carnivorous rabbits transformed by population control gone haywire. These hopping mad hares quickly multiply like, well, rabbits, and before you can say what's up doc, they've mangled an entire mining town. The last survivors lure the Lagomorphs to a drive-in theater where they're massacred by the National Guard and finished off with a makeshift electric fence. Now, our final example of animals gone awry comes from New Zealand in the 2006 horror comedy Black Sheep. There's a lot to unpack here, but the basic gist is that a mad scientist is hell-bent on creating carnivorous sheep that can also turn humans into lycanthropic land monsters with a single bite. <laughs> Got it? Good. Soon, the ferocious flock is in a full-fledged feeding frenzy, but they're still susceptible to the herding instincts of the humble sheepdog. After dicing up the sheep-loving dick who started this whole mess, the creatures are corralled, but without enough of the antidote, our heroes are forced to resort to more drastic measures. A fiery explosion set off by the massive amount of methane released by thousands upon thousands of mutant sheep farts. Get up behind! That's pretty hard to top, but we've only scratched the surface when it comes to pissed off pets. From bears to birds, alligators to zombies, the entire animal kingdom is fair game for creepy cinema. And we love our furry friends, and we would never, ever, ever, ever wish them harm. But as far as horror films go, sometimes. Um. That is better. Thanks for watching, everyone. There is a whole lot more of evil animals to unpack in horror cinema. We couldn't possibly cover them all. So leave a comment and let us know which animal horror movies you'd like to see in future episodes. Frogs, Anaconda, Eight-Legged Freaks. Leave a comment, sound off, and as always, please subscribe to Now This Nerd.